When you hear typical DX7 sounds, you notice that it's quite noisy with background noise. For over 30 years, I had to live with the noisy DX7 sounds. But finally, I managed to minimize that background noise that you hear from the DX7 audio output. You will notice that DX7 sounds from my demo videos are very clean. You don't hear typical hissing background and constant noise you normally hear from the DX7 at all. Now, I don't use equalizer or any other things to cut down on the DX7 background noise, so it's quite remarkable. So, let's hear a sample of a DX7 sound with typical background noise. This DX7 sound was directly recorded from the DX7 digitally. Please find a quiet place to continue watch this video so you can actually hear the noise. With mono, it is actually a bit quieter, but when stereo, the noise gets louder. Here is an example of the background noise in stereo. The noisy DX7 sound is one of the disadvantages of having the actual hardware instead of software FM synthesizers. In today's standard, the DX7 audio output is very noisy. So, how did I manage to minimize the background noise from my DX7 Mark I? Now, I will share some tips that you can use to make your DX7 sound clean, almost background noise free. The first tip, you need a good cable to connect the DX7. A great tip that I got was from a guy from a local music shop. He suggested me to get a balanced cable for my DX7. So, what is a balanced cable? I didn't know this until recently, but there are mainly two types of a cable available. Let's compare cables. Common cables you will find is one that is unbalanced. It only has two segments and I was using this type of cable for my DX7 until last year. Of course, unbalanced cable is usually cheaper and I didn't think using defined cables makes such a difference. Now, let's look at the balanced cable. It has three segments and it looks like a stereo cable but one of the segments is used for grounding. A good balanced cable usually costs a bit more, but I thought I gave it a try and see how good the DX7 sound would be. The second tip to have a clean sound from the DX7 Mark I is to have a very good effect processor. Using a balanced cable, you can connect your DX7 to an effect unit and it can produce amazingly clean sound too. What you want to look for from an effect processor is to check its specs for its sound quality. You should check things like signal to noise ratio, dynamic range and others. Also, it will be useful for an effect unit to have digital audio connectors so you can send or receive digital audio signal. I did a bit of research and chose a Lexicon MX400 effect processor. Great things about this effect unit are that it has an incredible dynamic range of 109 decibel for analog input signal. You can also increase its input gain without making the DX7 noise audible so it has very clean analog inputs. On top of that, 
you can hear every nuance of the DX7 sounds. Thankfully, those hardware-based effect units are quite cheap nowadays, so you don't have to spend a lot of money to buy a great unit like back in the 1980s. The third tip is to use a good audio interface with minimal use of analog audio connection. What I mean by that is that if you have a good effect unit with digital audio interface, you can use it to connect to a good audio interface unit. As the audio interface connects to a computer, you can maintain digital signal from an effect unit into MIDI and audio recording software. My choice of audio interface is Roland Octa Capture. It has great signal to noise ratio and a dynamic range for its analog input and output. It has two extra audio channels for digital audio input, so I connect my Lexicon MX400 via digital coaxial cable to send a 24-bit audio signal from my Lexicon to Octa Capture. Finally, Octa Capture is connected to my iMac running Logic Pro X via USB for 10 audio inputs. So. This is a simple diagram of my setup. The DX7 output level is set at maximum, then its audio signal is sent via balanced cable. Lexicon MX400 receives a DX7 audio signal at lower input level, around 60%. I set my Lexicon this way, so there is a huge headroom available. I also use its digital coaxial connection to send the DX7 audio signal from my lexicon to Roland Octa Capture. Roland Octa Capture receives 24 bit digital audio signal and it is sent to iMac via USB. So the 24 bit audio signal is maintained. In total, only have one analog connection from my DX7 to Lexicon MX400. Here is a photo of actual setup showing the back of Roland Octa Capture at the top and the Lexicon MX400 at the bottom. As the DX7 is mono, I only use one balanced cable to connect the DX7 and the Lexicon MX400. Lexicon MX400 digital audio signal is sent via coaxial cable to Roland Octa Capture. So the pristine 24 bit digital signal is maintained. Now, the wait is over. Let's hear a very clean DX7 sound. Wow, this is the epic, warm DX7 pad. Now, where is the noise? The usual background noise that you hear from the DX7 is nowhere to be found with my DX7 Mark I. The sound like this soft and warm pad will have a typical DX7 audible background noise. Because soft pad like this cannot mask the background noise as it has no higher harmonic rich sawtooth tone. So the result is a combination of three tips that I explained. If you can get your DX7 sound as good as like mine, then we can be proud of having the real DX7 Mark I. Matching audio quality of software FM synthesizers. Let's summarize the three tips. One, get a good quality cable. A balanced cable is recommended. 
two, have a great effect unit with great dynamic range and signal to noise ratio with a digital audio connection. Three, have a great audio interface with a digital audio connection so you can minimize analog audio connections. Now, let's hear how good the Epic Warm Pad is again. This is what the DX7 is designed for. Truly epic and breathtaking. So, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.